beautiful human. I am Zach. Uh, this is the Zach Sang Show, and we welcome, for the first time ever, Meet Me at the Altar. Ooh. Yay. Let's go, let's go. <laughs> Yay. Thanks for having us. Literally so anytime. Much. It's an honor to have you here, but I do want to keep going on that because that's fascinating to me. You watch back it pretty much instantly. Like you performed here, a little bit different. Obviously, you can see my legs. We're at the Taco Bell headquarters, <laughs> also known as <laughs> my second home. Uh, but you performed here for everybody, like yeah. maybe an hour or two ago. Mm-hmm. And before we started, you were listening back to that performance. What are you listening for? Um, mistakes. Honestly, but are you ever acknowledging what you do well? Um, I'm working on it, but not. As much as I should probably, but it always like, I'm like, okay, you can't look Edith because that's going to be like bad for you. But like, I didn't l- mean to look like it was just on someone's story and I was tapping their stories and then I saw it and I was like, I have to listen now. So I listened. Yeah. But there is something to watching and learning and, yeah. and giving yourself the right balance of critiques. Yeah. I think I don't have any, like, I don't know where to cut off the critiquing. For every good, for every critique, should be something great that you do. Compliment sandwich. <laughs> yeah, you got to be able to. But can you even find what you do well? Um. Can you? Can you like? Are you aware to it? Can you sense it? Do you know? I think so. I think so. A little bit. Your voice is crazy. Thank you. It's really incredibly unique. In a world where, like, I think we we we, we hear so much music mm. every fucking day. Your voice cuts through and stands out in a real way. Aww. So. Thank you. That is truth. A band formed on the internet. Yeah. Like this crazy story. None of you had met each other. Three different points on the East Coast. Like, how do you know you can sing? Um, I, I don't remember not being able to sing. Like, that sounds crazy, but my dad's a singer. Like, my aunts on my dad's side and my granddad and my great-granddad, all singers. So I think it's just really in me. And I just grew up being able to, like, sing everything. And I just didn't – it was never a thought. I never had to ask myself if I could sing or not. It just kind of was. Is it, like, a thing where, like, you remember, like, speaking and singing just were always hand-in-hand? Hand? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. What, what do your parents think about the type of music you choose to sing? <laughs> Um, well, I, I grew up singing in, like, classical choruses and, like, church, and then... This is not that. Not at all. But then what I, like... Mean? <laughs> it is. We, meet me at the altar. Row. We're a Christian group. <laughs> meet me at the altar. Duh. Okay. Yeah. We, we know the origin of that name, which is a text message. Yeah. 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 And then I hit my emo phase when I was, like, 14, mm. and then my mom was like, oh, my God, like, it's a phase, and I just n- it never stopped. And what did you say? It's not a it's phase, not, mom. Literally, it's not. And then, like, she um, took me to shows growing up. She drove me to, like, four warp Tours a summer. She was really in it with well, me. So she embraced the fact of that, course. Like, it took a, It took a minute, but then she was like, okay, like, I guess this is what it is. That's so wholesome. Yeah. <laughs> and she's, I love her so much for that, because, like, that's how I realized I wanted to be in a band, from, like, her taking me to all those things. She must be so proud of you. Yeah. Yeah. I know. Angela. <laughs> Shout out Angela. Yeah. We love her. But do you remember meeting each other for the very first time? Like yeah. not online, but in so real clear. life? So clear. Yeah. Because like me and Ada had met for the first time before Edith had joined the band. But the first time we all three met together, it was like six in the morning. We were in Jersey at Ada's house at the time. Edith had pulled up with her dad who had like flown to Jersey with her. So she wasn't meeting us for the first time. Like, we were, like, six-year-old men going to, like, <laughs> right. kidnap Literally, her or something. Yeah. yeah. Um, we were also playing our first show together as a three-piece that night. Wait. So hold on. And It's a lot. We did yeah, this often, a, man. It's a lot to <laughs> We would usually show up either the day before a show or the day of a show. Well, not quite That's show up, but Literally, we would yeah. practice at least day of a show or the day before a show. It just because that was the only time that we had. Yeah, like, we were just kids, so, like, and we were from different states, obviously, so had to make it work somewhere. So well, We had I school on Monday. Yeah, you know? yeah. <laughs> like, we, we can't we stay fly to Orlando. Long. We'd fly to Orlando and, like, just practice the day before and then play the show and then leave, like, the how day after. How did you convince your parents that this was real? 
Well, my parents were not on board at first. Really? Like, because <laughs> when we formed, I was at my grandparents' house for the summer, and like I'd found out through a YouTube cover that she posted, and. I told my parents that I was talking to this 16-year-old girl who plays drums. And, like, I saw her on YouTube and, like, oh, like, I really want her to, like, come down to Florida and, like, stay with us so I can, like, meet her because we're, like, a band. And they are like, no. They <laughs> shut that down. And I was, like, really upset about it because I knew that Ada was real. But, like, of course, I understand their parents. I would do the same thing for my kid. I was like, no. Like, it, it's all right. And then they came around. We hung out on Halloween and did this like little yeah. set at my friend's house. Yeah, for like a tiny Halloween party. You know where party. I was? Where? At home being bitter. <laughs> <laughs> because yeah. I was I had tried out in 2015. Okay, first of all, uh, let me just start. It's, it's a lot to unpack. I was on YouTube. And we're going to go back to the first album which I listened to. The first Wait, album? Wait. Wh- no, what but what the do you first think album. that is? Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> Redwall. No! no! Oh my god! That's crazy. Jeez. I'm just interested Damn how you it. all realize that you can be musicians <laughs> over video chat. Because like we grew up on the internet, it's like easy. Yeah, but like at yeah, no I point mean. can you in in real time harmonize or synchronize or do anything. Like how do, can you tell that you have musicianship <laughs> w- when video chat is your sole way to communicate? Good question. When we can. Record to a click separately. Because, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, we I mean, never, like, we wanted to, like, jam, but we never, yeah, ever got sure. to jam. Because you can't do it on FaceTime. There's a delay. Yeah. So yeah. we could never play together. We could only play individually and then put it together. Yeah. And that's how we functioned as a band for, like, two years. So, I, I, I mean, when you're doing that, at what point do you realize you have something? Because mm-hmm. you're listening to everything individual and, like, like any good thing, it, you know, ingredients separate and not mixed kind of tastes like shit. Right. So True. at what point in the process do you realize that there's actually something here that is worth going to your parents and convincing them to just let you go meet somebody in another state for? I don't know. I just feel like it's because when we did put it together, we were like, we kind of sound like a real band, you know? And that inspired us to like want to take it the next step further and be like, well, okay, we can't keep recording out of our garage if we want to make it like we have to go to producer and like work with someone and like get our our music on all the dsps and all that so like there were so many months where we just sat and like googled shit on like how to get your music up yourself and like how to book your first like show and like first tour like we were a diy band for three four years we didn't get signed until 2020 yeah, by really? Fueled by yep. Ramen. Yeah. Yep. Shout out for them. Love Fueled <laughs> by Ramen. Shout out. <laughs> Shout out. Do you Shout like out. being signed? Yeah. Yeah. Everything's mm-hmm. easier. And I think honestly. um, it's definitely scary, like, when we were shopping around for labels, like, we're, we're still, like, rightfully so possessive of our art and, like, what we make. And we like things to be absolutely perfect in our brains. So we were scared to, like, sign up first because it's like you hear a lot of horror stories about record labels and like artists not having the freedom to do what they want mm. so then when I feel like Rama came along and like we talked to them we were like okay this is this is good and then once they were like you can do what you want we were like well that's what I had to say because <laughs> mm-hmm. we literally have control of everything we do still on a major which is insane but you released a bunch of projects before you get signed mm-hmm. how mm-hmm. did you know you were ready to get signed I think you know when they start coming, maybe. But then again, we were like, okay, we are bigger than me. Got a lot of traction our EP. Yeah. And then like people were really, really paying attention now, and they were like, okay, like this is happening. And then what was it about that EP that didn't exist before that people paid attention to? Playlisting. Playlist. That was the first time we ever got playlists on Spotify. Which like that is what we (laughs) (laughs) we've always known. Huh? Why? I think that was also like the. Yeah, that was the first time we went to, like, an actual producer. Yeah. And, like, oh, yeah. he yeah. understood everything. He matched with us so well. And he is an incredible producer. And, like, I think that helped us shine more because, like, it wasn't, like, self, self-produced. self And I think that might have been the first time that we submitted, too, because I think we were using yeah. a different distribution Yeah, for the first, like, couple EPs, like, before Edith. So then that was, like, the first thing that we submitted. But that really changed, mm-hmm. like, a lot for us because, like, we did our first, like, 
headliner, which we don't even count because we were playing to like 10 people a show. Well, and it was like yeah. a week. <laughs> but like that week. playlisting got us those 10 people right. at like, you know, Chicago. And no, Chicago had 80, which was like, oh, yeah. so that was for big us. for us. That was one of our yeah. biggest shows. That was great for us. That was right time, before obviously. COVID. Right before COVID. Like just literally right up. before. Literally. So, but, but you only for the first time in 2015? Yeah. So I was on YouTube and I, I that's why I think like, I always say like this is fate, like literally, because I was on YouTube, like just doing nothing. I'm like it was my a recommended video. I didn't look anything up. It was Ada. She posted a video called "I'm in a band. We need a singer." And <laughs> I was like, "Well, it's obviously me. Like I'm always gonna get it." <laughs> so I watched it, and they had like a lot of like things that they wanted in the singer, like preferably a girl, preferably on the East Coast, preferably between this age and this age all this stuff and I was like I'm all of that and then I kept all the records in a, a Doctor yeah, Who journal dude. I and had like, <laughs> I, I tried out with Paramore all I wanted I sang that song and Killed I was like it. I ate because I did and <laughs> it was really good and I sent it over Kick do you remember Kick? <laughs> yeah that yeah. was a uh, sign that's of the times. fucking ter- terrifying Ugh. but I sent it Crazy over time. Kick and then I was like well I'm a shoe in and then like a week passes and then they didn't choose me they chose someone else. Correction, Ada didn't vote for me. Wait, yeah. me and I was a real one. There was also <laughs> another person me. in the band at the time. Which is really funny. Her name is Rose. She was their bassist. And she's yeah. like my best friend now, but she voted against yeah, me. Yeah, we both did. And <laughs> but like, she's like literally my, I think she's my like platonic soulmate. But like she voted <laughs> against me. So Taya was outvoted. We have a very complicated history. Yeah, this we is do. crazy. It's <laughs> a lot of back and forth. And you know, I was really upset. And I was like, and, like, I think this is, like, good that I have kind of an addictive personality because I, d- I, I was delusional. I was like, you know what? I don't lose. I'm not a loser. <laughs> so Period. I'm going to get in this not. band. This is the last thing I do. And I literally, I watched them do everything because they, they're online bands. So they posted everything online. I was stalking them every single okay, day. Okay, Joe Goldberg. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not joking. I, I, was on my, I was on my Hailey Bieber moment. Yes, I were. I do. I stalked them, and I was like praying about it. I was manifesting about it. I was like, "Yeah, but why did you want to join this band? What was it like? What was calling you to it?" I didn't want to be in a band with white dudes. I'm sorry. (laughs) I get it. (laughs) Right, us either. (laughs) And like, it it was really hard for me to find anyone because I was already the only black kid everywhere growing up. And then on top of that, I was really emo. So then, like. That was weird for me. So, like, n- I didn't connect with anyone else. I couldn't find anyone else like them. And I don't know. I just, like, same age, girls, a girl band that plays pop Just made sense. Of course. Yeah. So then I got Taya's number somehow. Somehow. <laughs> somehow. <laughs> and I texted her, I kid you not, every day for two years. Do you need a singer? Do you need a singer? Literally. I was like, I'm getting in this fucking band. Yo. You and were wearing me down. I was. <laughs> and and I, I, I broke her down a little bit. She was like, okay, fine. Like, let's just do a cover and see what happens. And now we're here. So Holy shit. Yeah. Is that not proof that consistency <laughs> literally is no. everything? No. Yeah. And, like, the second you choose not to swing is the second that your life could be changed forever? Yeah. Exactly. Like, that's, like, oh, I just got full body goosebumps. <laughs> Two that's years. That's a long, a long time. time. I'm a little bit crazy. No, no, no. no you, when you, kn- I think there's a difference, right? I think. Sometimes I think deep passion could be mistaken for craziness. And I think knowing deep down that you're meant for something mm-hmm. and that's fueled by like a really pure passion yeah. for whatever that thing is. I don't think that's crazy. I think that's just really deeply knowing and understanding mm-hmm. yourself and understanding that whatever you're going after is going to be better with you being a part of it. Right. Yeah. Especially because we've done so much already like uh, there was no way you weren't gonna feel that pull of yeah. us right now being like nope you need to go after yep. them right now but then again i like we always say that like i'm glad that happened because i was not and like yeah there's a lot going on in my life at that time and i don't think i was i would have been able to like just be productive with them if i if they chose me there's i don't think there's any way I could you wouldn't be the best member you could be right so then i think they all happen for reasons so and everything worked out kind of perfectly timing wise because we mm-hmm. were like well I was in my first year of college and Edith was taking a gap year yeah. and that was when COVID happened so like everything shut down like we went remote like went back home and I just never went back because a few months later we got our our record deal which was like that timing is crazy and like you crazy. didn't even have to go yeah. like yeah, so yeah perfect. I know. 
So, okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's fate. Yeah. A lot of that. The band exists. You do how many albums without Edith? An EP and an album. So, like, two releases. Yeah. And the first project you were a part of is? Bigger Than Man. Jenny Sates. Jenny Sates. I'm Sates. so sorry. <laughs> I blocked that one out her. of my brain. We yeah. forget her. We do. Even yeah. that, like, we... Changing States. Our self-produced one. Okay, yeah. got it. Mm-hmm. But, okay, you can make the case that your self-produced project gets you a producer now. You clearly don't like it. Uh, yeah. What do you not like about it? It's just terrible. Okay, <laughs> You have to learn something from it, though. But then also, okay, I think we learned a lot about ourselves writing-wise and, like, how Tan and I work together. Definitely learned a lot about that. But then, like, the songs are, like, fucking four minutes long for no oh reason. Oh, my God, five There's, minutes. There's, like, for five choruses, and, like, yeah. <laughs> at the end. And then <laughs> it just sa- doesn't sound good, you know? And I just want to say, like, Past, Present features, like, 15 songs in 30 minutes. Yeah, no, they're so yeah, short. They're, they're very, very short. short. But they're short and sweet. <laughs> is that a strategy that you said yes. before you go into it? Of course. Yeah. We, Especially now. It's when you play stuff live, you really learn how to like adjust your songs in the future cuz like we're playing 4 minute songs and like you know just shredding constantly. That it gets tiring and my hand gets tired. <laughs> and I, I would rather uh sound good than be doing the most and not be able to execute it. Like every night for like two al- months. I think we also like grew up a little bit and like we like find a lot of beauty and simplicity. I don't yeah. think everything has yeah. to be so intense for it to be good. And I think part of that comes with like us really wanting to make a name for ourselves. Cause like in the beginning, like we had to do everything ourselves. Like we were fighting to get on playlists and like mm-hmm. begging people to play shows with us and stuff. So like we had to do so much on our own and i don't know i i don't know it's just it's kind of yeah, crazy i, I like a lot of songs in changing states i would like to like re-record them and like rewrite and mess with things at one point of our careers i'd love to do that yeah i would yeah that'd be really good because they were like the songs themselves were good like yeah. i yeah, like the songs really but it's solid. just like I, I don't know what the fuck I was doing. I was like <laughs> 16. <laughs> Literally, the first song we wrote together, Tia, was, was How, How Could, could you, you Ever Lie. Oh, that I song is a banger. I don't even care. <laughs> so, I remember so specifically, I was outside on my trampoline, and like, I remember Tia sent me like a voice memo of like a guitar part, <laughs> and I just, I went to town on it on the trampoline. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 I remember that. Well, so right now, it's the two of you mostly on, I mean, every song that's on this new album. And then you bring in one or two other writers, and sometimes they they stick from song to song, but you rotate. How do you, and, well, Jonathan Field, right, is the producer? Yeah. Field? Is his full name Jonathan? Is John it? Fields? John. Yeah. That'll be Jonathan. Wait, Jonathan I can was like, do we not know that? Like, I guess it's Jonathan. John. Jonathan. Yeah, John. John. Jonathan, we love him. Why aren't you in the room, number one? Like, why don't you have a writing credit? I'm al- oh, she's I'm, always there. I'm always in the room, but Taya is also a drummer, and I've, I not to speak for you, but I would assume it's a lot easier <laughs> to r- write guitar and drums at the same time. Yeah. It is so we've opened the door for Ada though. Like yeah, like, do, if you want to get a conversation, time, everything. I don't think she even yeah. really wants to do everything that Taya does is probably something that I would also do. So it's like if uh, anything, if you ever did anything wrong or anything right. that sounded bad, I'd be like, hey, okay, I'm sorry, right. but we need to talk about this. Something and that hasn't come like up at all. When we so like when we're writing the songs, I'll just kind of like lay down the general like drums for it but then when we get in the studio like whoever yeah. we're working with that is true they really help like massage all the parts and like we have a give thing them some for, we have a thing for drummer producers we do like f- it the just guy happens who to produce be like um bigger than me and model citizen he's a drummer you can and tell john fields is a drummer i don't know why that always happens but yeah and we do tend to once we're in the studio me and them usually will come up with little things together mm-hmm. but the song is usually there. How are you setting up the room? Like, who are you? How, like, is John picking the writers that you work with? No. Oh my oh gosh, no. I literally almost lost my mind. Like, because <laughs> this is the first time we're like had the resources to find good writers. So like, um, our A and R was like, okay, like, do you want to write with other people? And Tay and I were like, uh, I mean, maybe sure. not really. So then we we were like, okay, let's just be open to it. Let's see what happens. 
and like writing finding good writers you mesh with is like speed dating it's the most annoying thing ever like we had so many like bad bad sessions because like ugh, the songs if oh. you don't listen to me i don't i'm not gonna like you like that's not gonna work and the songs weren't even like the sessions were bad just because of our experiences but like the songs themselves actually they weren't bad like they were fine they could go to anyone but that's not what we wanted we don't want our songs to be able so to just go to anyone oh okay, to get this album of 15 songs that runs for 30 minutes how many sessions did you have in total do you even know i don't even know <laughs> a lot. how many um, were bad <sighs> they were like two weeks worth of sessions that were just oh like oh my gosh so like i think like more than half of them didn't make it yeah, yeah. honestly damn but we ended up finding a handful of people that we really worked well with. That's the process. And we mm -hmm. were just like, why Why are we still, like, reaching out to other people when we have a solid team that we can just, you know, mm -hmm. rotate? And, and, like, now I feel like they're just with us forever. Like, yeah, they, like they don't have a choice. They think they do. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, I love I, – I, Say It To My Face is a great record. Does that start in the room, or do you come in with something? Um, started in the room, yeah. With what? Well, we just kind of started writing instrumental. We didn't know what we wanted to write about specifically. And then... Oh, yeah, um, it was the bass line. It started with the bass line. John Ryan, who we wrote, like, a bulk of the record with John Ryan, like, One Direction Man. Like, he just, he's, like, One Direction in person. And he's incredible. Love him. And so whenever we write with him, it's so organic. And, like, we don't really think about things so specifically and he put that drum loop for say it up and then Taya started riffing mm -hmm. and then we got the melody y'all just started like going for it yeah, you just started like saying stuff and then um we were like why don't we kind of write a diss track because like we've experienced so much like so many eyes on us since signing and like everyone has something to say about us and like i think people think they can just say whatever they want especially when you're a girl in rock, like people think they could say the stupidest shit. We get the stupidest shit like said to us a lot and like commented. And we were like, that's the first time we were really seeing stuff like that. And we were like, well, what better way to come back than to say like, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> so like, yeah, yeah, true. Say it to my face. Where do you think that comes from? <sighs> Where what comes from? The comments, the hate. I don't understand it. <sighs> I don't know. Like maybe like, I, I feel like hurt people hurt people. I agree and with that. And so, yeah. I don't know. I think we are so unapologetically us that sometimes it makes people that feel like they can't be themselves right. upset and they kind of take it out on us. But then it's like, it's so hard being a, a girl. Like, it's so hard. And I'm like, the biggest thing we get is an industry plan. That's like the yeah. biggest. Oh. Mm -hmm. That's what, and that, that's like so, it couldn't be farther from the truth because we, literally like what it's so yeah. crazy like, <laughs> we're, we're like playing, we like, are the most organic people, like yeah flying everywhere to like play to like four people like every weekend and yeah. it's just because we're girls and also we're obviously not white as you can see so i think they think we're like this perfectly like meshed together thing of so many different experiences and people right. that it's like fake yeah, but it's really just the internet come to life right yeah, yeah. like you, you know isn't that yeah. just the world and we have to, like, that's something that we've really been focusing on right now is learning to not look at that kind of stuff. Because, like, obviously these people are just saying stuff to say stuff because if they took two seconds to do any research, they would know that's not true. <laughs> and also, mm -hmm. like, if you think about it, when you don't like something, you normally just, like, turn it off, right? right. These people are taking time to type out paragraphs about, no, it's like... it's good. Right. Like, they... Well, you it def also defies like their definition of what rock and roll is. Yeah. So what is your definition right. of that? Just honesty and, like, just raw, like, unapologetically you, yeah. I think. Yeah. Because that is rock and roll. It's pretty rock yeah. and roll. Yeah, yeah, it definitely is. I like agree raw. with that. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah. <laughs> I'm a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Someone, oh, my God. I fucking hate Reddit, okay? Reddit... <laughs> It's so scary. And I used to look on Reddit and like I was don't anymore because it just got really tiring. So I was like, oh yeah, I met Edith, blah, 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 and she's a bitch. And I was like, what? That's like one of my worst nightmares too. 
Yeah. That people like meet me and then they hate me after they meet me. I mean, I'm so I'm so nice. Which is like, <laughs> what like could you possibly have done? I don't know. But they maybe took that experience like that. I think it might be a little strong sometimes. Re- resting bitch face. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I feel I it. Know. You know my favorite song from this album. You should listen to it, by the way. Link in the description below. Absolutely. Past, Absolutely. present, future. I love a few tomorrows. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. 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 Yo. Great pick. Favorite. Like, holy shit. These lyrics are relevant to me. Mm. Oh, my God. Love never breaks. It only bends. This isn't something that can end. That is true. Like, real love mm. is staying when you really should run the fuck away. Exactly. And yeah. It's a choice. Oh, my God. Like I want to I throw my computer. <laughs> <laughs> because, like... It, I was having this conversation with somebody just the other day. I may or may not be in love with them. And that was the conversation, right? Like in like love is a real love is the most flexible. Real love is the most unwavering. Real love again is riding through a storm when you have a fucking exit hatch and you don't need to take it because you rather ride through the storm. Like, it, it is, I, I, it, you summed it up in such a really unique way. Where are you writing this from? Are you writing it from the perspective of somebody who can't be with the person they know they're meant to be with? Or are you writing it from the perspective of, I now know what this love is like because I am experiencing it? It's kind of like having to leave someone. But yeah. reassuring them that, like, nothing's going to change. Like, even though I have to, you know, be away for a while. And we wanted to leave it open to interpretation. Art. Um, it could be about a relationship. It could be about, you know, death. It could be about, you know, it, just having to leave anyone of, of any sort. And wanting them to know, like, it's okay. Like, we're going to get through this day by day. And, like, eventually we'll be together again. And, like, nothing, nothing is going to come between that. Mm. Who'd you have to say that to? Dude, everyone we have to leave behind on tour. Like, Is this like a general story that you've made up to like go with this song? Kind of. We just wanted anyone to be able to relate to it. Yeah. You know? We wanted something that was super like just so emotional and makes someone want to cry. Like so honest and like so... Th- you can't mistake these lyrics for anything else other than right. like kind of sad. And I don't know. I and you can apply it to your best. life. It's and I was so we were so excited about this song because um, we got to put strings in a song. Yes, I love strings. We wanted to do that for so long. Uh, we yes. love songs like these. It's like not not quite guilty pleasure, but like break even by the script. Yes. Vibe. Oh, dude, that is love stuff like that. Incredible yeah, song. Real story. It's really big. Yeah, it's yeah. doing something that they don't usually do. Yeah. So, do you know what love is? I don't think I do yet. But, I mean, maybe. I don't know. Oh, my God. Yes. I think you do with Rose. Oh, my God, Rose. Your I friend. also think you do with us. Because they're, they're in love way. with each other. Because there's different forms of love. There's different forms of love, and I do think, because, like, obviously, we're not related. But... <laughs> <laughs> These, these bitches are my sisters <laughs> and like and like that's love you know yeah. there is family love Absolutely. and then i could make the case that like the perfect partner in life is also your best friend i think she, so i true. really think she she might be yeah yeah ah sick awesome <laughs> my dream is to end up with my best friend too it's probably not oh. gonna happen but your oh. partner if you find them they can become your best friend like instantly. Absolutely. That's true. That is, that, yeah. Mm-hmm. You'll never know that until it happens. Damn. But it's worth it. Damn. I just wanted to say, though, for people who d- might not know, like, you know it's real love when it's patient and when you don't, like, treat someone like their mistakes. Mm-hmm. You know that they make mistakes, but you're there to support them and, and grow with them. I feel like that's something that, like, a lot of people settle and, and don't realize that they deserve like something that's patient and good for you. That is 
very Someone's true. In love. Yes. <laughs> Are you? Yeah, and we all love her. Yeah, for sure. Sweet. <laughs> Damn. Sometimes you you just meet someone and you know, you know. Aww. Yeah. Just oh, like Edith, it. like you 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 know when someone's gonna be in your life for a really long time. I do, yeah. Mm-hmm. And we met a fan the other night, and I got that feeling with her. I was yeah. like, "You're you're sticking around. You can." Her name was Opal. Feel it. Shout out, Shout Opal. out Opal. Yeah. Opal. How'd y'all meet? At the show. Oh, not the fan. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the last tour we were on, I. Yeah. <laughs> so a fan. Yeah. Well, no, no. no. The complete opposite. So I was gonna go through my hoe face because I've never. I had was one. rooting for her. Oh my god! I was like, Tam, yeah, be a really whore. Were. I was please. trying so hard. I was going on Tinder, and yeah. it, it's a, one of those other fake kind of things because, like, most of the time, I was matching with people after I'd already left the city that I was mm. in. Mm. We happened to match when we had two days in the same city, so we matched yeah. the day before. The next day, I was like, hey. I don't know what your plans are for tonight. It was like a Thursday, but my band is playing the show. <laughs> you know, if you can come by. And she was like, I'm actually going to a different concert. Damn. And I was like, oh, shit. And then I looked up where she was, and it was a six-minute walk away from where we were. I was like, do you want to, like, get drinks after the show? And she was like, Aww. yeah. And we got done with our meet and greet right as her concert ended. And we had, like, a eight-hour-long date. That day, <laughs> they really did. They really did. <laughs> it was like it was. It was like it was four. Old. It was like four in the morning, and I like roll over in my bed, and <laughs> and Taya's in the room, and I'm like brushing my teeth, and like <laughs> and dark, and her Damn. and her date just standing there, Giddy like up. not knowing what to do, and the rest of us are sleeping, and I'm just like, oh, I guess it went well. And we haven't stopped talking <laughs> since. I remember t- Taya was freaking out, um, <laughs> and <laughs> she was like, Edith, I was like, why? She's like. She's so tall. I don't know what to do. <laughs> yeah, she's very tall. Because I'm 5'5", five five and I was like, oh, my God, she looks tall as fuck. And then I texted her about it, and I was like, I'm just letting you know, before we meet in person, <laughs> my flaw is that I'm 5'5", five five. and she's like, that's not a flaw. And I was like, oh. that's a good height. She's just oh, very she's tall. Okay. She's ba- yeah, she is I very tall. I have to, like, break my goddamn neck, and I have to yeah. go on my tippy toes to kiss her. <laughs> It's so adorable. Cute. True love. I love this. Mm. I'm, it's very dude, I'm honestly very jealous. <laughs> it's out there for you, though. If you want it. It's true. That's how you know that you have it in the future. What? What? what, 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 what? That Your future self has it, and that's why you desire it. Oh. That's deep as hell. I don't know who that is. Damn. Hey, is that, is that you, Taya? That was deep. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very spiritual right it. now. That's really interesting. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so you believe? Okay, you believe in that? Like, there's multiple universes going on. Oh, for sure. Oh, yeah, there yeah. is. Oh, yeah, I think so too. Mm. And <laughs> yeah. the past, present, and future Damn. are all happening at the same time. They are. We just didn't know it. Yeah, yeah. Do you really believe that? Yeah, yeah. And that, okay. when you know that, it's so comforting because you don't mm-hmm. have to stress about anything. Yeah, the future is already guaranteed. You know, and mm-hmm. that's. Exactly how we've gotten to where we are today. We weren't rushing to get anywhere. We were taking our time. We, when we were shopping for labels, we were perfectly content Mm -hmm. with turning down every single deal until we got what we wanted, what we knew we deserved. And it just happened. Here we are. But it also, like, just, like, that, I feel like my whole life is just a whole manifestation. I get that. I agree with that. I literally manifested my way here. You did. With them. (laughs) And then, like... Okay, do you want to know a secret? Yeah. So, I my room is is very emo, obviously, and like, I started putting like posters of like my favorite bands and everything on my wall when I was like thirteen, and it's still there. And like <laughs> everything, like I put up a a picture of Phil by Ramen's logo two years before we signed there, and then I put up a picture. <laughs> this is gonna sound so weird. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, I put up a picture of like. <laughs> Um, Biba Doobie on like Stephen Colbert. Sick. And then we got Stephen Colbert like a week later. So I think my whole life is, I just really believe in manifest manifesting. Like it's so real. Just like right here I with you, Zach. <laughs> I watch all your interviews. Yeah, you don't know, but and over now we're the years. here. <laughs> See, it's all <laughs> in the brain. No, all in the brain. You you believed. Of course. It and it was. Yeah. I really Wait, do. Can agree we call with something that. right well, now? Yeah. Right now, we're trying to manifest a Jonas Brothers tour. We okay, yes, we are. And okay. we find ourselves aligning with people that are, you know, in their world. So I feel like it's 
it's common because John Fields he oh that, produced that's that's that is why a that's, Brothers producer that's yeah. why you yep. went to him and then like uh, we shot the TMI video with Cynthia who's their like um, why are you laughing I love this <laughs> 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 it's real all the so connections we didn't there. even choose that man yeah, yeah. yes happened to it just happens work to out that Cynthia's way Cynthia's their like um, day to day creative director and photographer for but aligning here's what I'll say. Sadly, you're not on the exact Zach Sang show couch right now. But, but I'm we you're ha- there. I'm right here. It's the same thing. And uh, these logs get knocked <laughs> on. We knock on wood a lot. And just think it, feel it, and rub the wood. Yes. Yes. Get in there. This is crazy, by the way. I was looking at this. Yeah, it's, a, it's a nice <laughs> what a piece contraption. of wood. What a contraption. Yeah. It's pretty. It's nice. So you want to open for the Jonas yes. Brothers? Yes, absolutely. Honestly, like you know, I was just gonna say, they're pretty white, so they would really. <laughs> I, you know what? Use this. <laughs> That's true. And, and, and make them look really good. <laughs> <laughs> to bring a bunch of brown girls on tour with them, I think. That'd be fucking That's amazing. That's points. It's a win-win for everyone. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Not denying it. TMI, another one of my favorite songs off this album. What, you, what are you? What's wrong? Because she's hiding. Because she's got to talk about it now. Are you about to reveal too much information? I already did in the song. <laughs> so. yeah. yeah. Is that a scary song to put out there? Um, yeah, but what made me less scary is Pink because Don't Let Me Get Me, that record is like, I like, I've never related to something so much in my whole entire life. And like the fact that she was able to be so honest and so vulnerable, like, at that time, especially, like, with her audience on, like, such a high level was so incredible to me. And I, I've I've never felt so understood by a song before. And I, like, I, I felt so safe when I listened to it. And I wanted other people to feel that when they listened to one of our songs. So I was like, if Pink can do it, then I can do it. Do you feel like safety comes from you being vulnerable? Yeah. Mm-hmm. It is weird. Like, people do feel understood by songs when they are heavy in detail. Mm-hmm. And I've even noticed that, like, because the record just came out and, like, we're playing it live. And it's, I can already tell, like, that's, like, going to be a highlighted song of our, oh. in our career for sure. Everyone's already singing yeah. every lyric. And I'm like, mm-hmm. it just came out. I like, f- I feel like songwriters fear sometimes being too specific. Mm. But I don't really think you can go wrong with being too specific. Mm. Yeah. But that song changed my life. And then I think, like, I, I told Tay and Ada, like, a, a while ago, like, before the album was even really shaping up, I was like, guys, like, I want to write, like, a, a Don't Let Me Get Me of this of this record. Like, I, I think I need to do it for myself. And, like, I want other people to feel safe with us. What part of creating that record changed your life? Was it releasing it or just creating it at all? Just saying it in the writing room and then, like, creating it, recording it, the video, like, everything surrounding it is, like, I think it was very therapeutic for me, and it, I learned a lot about myself, and it's just, I, I usually keep, like, all of my emotions, like, really deep in inside, and, like, no one really knows what I'm feeling, but I was, like, for our debut album, I would want to be just completely transparent and honest with at least one song. And honestly, in general, is what we really focus on for this album. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why we went through that crisis in the initial stages of writing the album, because it just didn't feel honest. It didn't feel like us. We were just writing songs to write songs. And, like, we kind of had to stop and be like, what are we doing? Like, why why are we doing something that we know and our soul, like, doesn't feel good to us? And that's why we wanted to, you know start fresh and tell our truth and that's the good and the bad i was hoping that like (laughs) and like that's really funny because uh we wrote it and then the label loved tmi like so Mm -hmm. much and i was like fuck i was like (laughs) damn it (laughs) and then like um our manager was like she called me and whenever she calls any of us it's like she wants to talk to us like not just a text type type of thing she was like hey i was like hey and she's like, I I have an idea for a TMI video. I think you're going to absolutely hate it. But I think you should do it. And then she was like, you should just be sitting down, like kind of like spotlight lighting. It should just be you. You should take your makeup off and like sing to the camera. 
And that's what we did. How scary is that? So, so scary, yeah. Yeah. What does your makeup and hair mean to you? Um, I, I think that, like, I just love fashion a lot. And at first it was, like, a connection with, like, heart, heart heavy music and, like, fashion, like, the same thing to me. And then after a while I was like, am I, like, hiding myself with all of this? Maybe a little bit. And then when I realized that, I was like, I think the video idea is pretty good because no one really sees me in, in that way, like, ever, because I'm always, like, done up. Do you do it to keep a separation between the person that we see and the person you really are? Oh, Baja Blast. <laughs> Baja down. Baja down. What did you say? Do you do it to <laughs> keep a distance between the person we see and the person you really are? Maybe. Maybe. But it's definitely, like, like since writing it and doing the video and everything, it's definitely, like, I'll just walk into the venue, like, not done up yet. And I would never have done that, like, a year ago. Really? Never. Yeah. Like, start you your day doing makeup. Yeah. Like, I, I literally, like, I started this tour, like, I just look like a mess. And I just walk in the venue in sweats. <laughs> oh, my she God. She would never get and caught sweats dead in sweats. And no <laughs> eyebrows. No eyebrows. Face and then I'll just be like, That's hey. Growth. And then I'll just do my makeup, like, right before the set, which is, like, crazy for me. That's really special. Yeah. And I'm glad, like, they were like, yeah, I can write it. Because, like, they made it a lot easier. Because, like, they're my best friends and they're always supportive of me. We were so. cheering at the video shoot. Yeah, they were, <laughs> they were like, in the corner. I was like, I, I want you guys to be there so bad. Like, I don't want to do it alone. But, like, when you think of that, right, this journey would be way more difficult without each other. Mm -hmm. Like, I have a lot of friends that have gone through the exact same thing. It's taken them years to get out of that riff of, like, Waking up, and the first thing they do is makeup. doesn't right. matter if it's their assistant who sees them or who. It's like, they need to be a certain way. Like, I totally understand that. Mm -hmm. But, like, imagine doing that alone and not having two other people to ride with you. And maybe you're not going through the exact same thing. But you have at least a deeper understanding because you're right there doing it as one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I often think about, like, fellow artists. and like, I can't. I can't. Oh, That's got to be so Dude, lonely. Yeah. yeah. Especially because, like... You can trust your team and, and love your team fully, but when you're a solo artist, like, it comes to a point where everyone around you is hired, you know? Mm -hmm. And we always have each other, you know, outside of that. So, yeah, it just it kind of makes me sad for solo artists sometimes, especially yeah. the ones that just don't have a good support system and just mm -hmm. get thrown in it, especially, like, the ones that, like, you know, blow up overnight or something. That's, that's a lot. Your hair is beautiful. Thank you. Do you change it often? All the time. I just posted it at Hair Diary on my Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> it's like all. <laughs> if you plug in my Instagram, it's like, <laughs> it's like all of like the hairstyles I've had since like 2020. Do they like? Are they attached to stages in life? Yeah, because like sometimes I'm like, oh my god, do you remember that? And then Adam, even Adam, would be like, oh yeah, that's when you have like rainbow hair. Yeah. He's like, yeah, it that's is. so true. It's yeah. like yeah. That's eras. How we figure out when we eras. did stuff. Yeah. It's sick. Yeah. Thank you. Well done. It takes six hours, so I'm glad you oh. <laughs> you think that. Yeah, that's ridiculous. Dedication, yeah. mm. dedication for sure. Past, present, future. That is the album. Link in the description below. How does the song start? Is there one way? What? Huh? How does the song start? What do you mean? Like, do you go into the studio and just write oh. to a beat? Do oh. you like <laughs> write down lyrics and then walk into the studio so with a bunch of stuff? Mm. I was gonna say. It mainly starts with the instrumental. Yeah, with that's like always the best way. But how do you, how's inspiration? I know, like, a lot of times Tay has woken up and been like, I want to write a song, like, waking up in Vegas. I want that type of vibe. Or, like, she'll have, like, a song in her brain. Mm -hmm. Most days. Oh, it's very rare when she doesn't have, like, an idea already before going yeah. in. Mm -hmm. I even think that's even subconscious for her. Sometimes I think it's just way back in there already. That's she doesn't so even know true. it. Because, like, we're very big vibe people. So, like, even if it's, yeah. like, a specific tempo that we want to, like, Especially when we're thinking about the live show in mind, that's important for us yeah, is what would get people moving mm -hmm. at the show. And yeah, we usually have some kind of inspo. But it's usually a beat. It's not like a lyric. It's not like a story that it's, you need to tell. It's a guitar. It's a guitar. It's a guitar. Yeah. Guitar yeah. and melody. And usually yeah. the lyrics either come 
slightly after the melody or like after the melody is like like i like one thing that we did i still kind of do like but in the early days when we were just writing by ourselves i like (laughs) (laughs) i dead ass low-key write melodies in simlish like i use like they're like okay imagine like a bunch of words together that just don't make any sense together but they're words and then sometimes after i do that i record it and then tara listen to it and she'll be like oh that kind of sounds like this word and if she likes that word, we'll build off of that one word. Sick. Kind of, yeah. Rappers do that. They yeah, mumble. Yeah, yeah. I love it. I love it. That's it's a really smart. cool technique. Mm-hmm. Are, like, producers down to ride with you see that? <laughs> yeah, kind of. Yeah. And I think that that's when we found John Ryan. It was, like, we love that he didn't really ask any questions about how our process already works and just kind of joined in. And, like, yeah. I, I didn't even think he noticed that. We were doing that. He just understood us so... He understood us before we understood us, yeah. I think. Mm-hmm. Damn, point. That's like how you it. know it's meant to be. Yeah. yeah for sure. Sick. Really sick. I love him so much. He's yeah. a genius. Shout out John Ryan. John <laughs> Ryan. And genius. you're also able to co-write TMI with John Ryan and Dan Wilson, which was crazy. Like, he's... Dan Wilson's such a legend. Like, crazy writer. Like, he... I don't know if they're still active. Probably not. The the band Simi Sonic. He's yeah. the lead singer Simi Sonic, and then like he wrote "Someone Like You" by Adele. Like he's just very seasoned, and he's such an old soul. And you don't prepare to like enter that room. You just go in blank. Yeah, we yeah. woke up and we just went. <laughs> Did yeah. about yeah. it. First, like Ro- thirty r- rock minutes. Rock and roll is honesty, though. Yeah, yeah, like the first like thirty minutes is just us talking to whoever we're writing with, and mm-hmm. like. For Dan specifically, it started with the story that he was telling about how yeah. when he was on his way there, he was, like, thinking of what he would say if we asked him, like, oh, no, how, how are you doing? How was your day? Because people always want to hear, oh, it was good. Good. Like, they don't actually care. They're just asking. Mm-hmm. And he was like, I'm always afraid of saying too much. And then Taya goes, TMI. That's a song name. And then I go, oh, this is my time to shine. <laughs> yep. And write about how I hate myself. <laughs> That's what we're yeah. going to do. <laughs> it works perfectly. Hold my beer. Let's, <laughs> let's yeah. unpack yeah. my luggage. Yeah. <laughs> Sick. <laughs> Sick. You guys are amazing. Oh, cute. You're pretty cool. You're amazing. Thanks. Cool with a K? Cool with a K. Okay. Cool with a K. You like Listen that, song, that song, by the way? It is a good one. Hell you yeah. played it here today. Yeah. You did. Do you not like it? What's wrong? That song, I feel like if you're just... If you get it, you really get it. Mm-hmm. And if you don't, you completely don't. And, like, I feel like with this record, since you wanted to branch out and not be so, like, niche, like, easy core pop punk, like, because our other releases are very, like, specific and they all basically sound, like, kind of the same. And with this album, we didn't want to, like, put ourselves in a box like that. So it's kind of more widespread of, like, different influences from different genres. And Cool is definitely one of them that's, like, unconventional like in your face really weird but really good yeah. and i think that we put it as a single because i think the shock value of it was so good and it was like oh this band could do more than just what they used to do and but we're still in this like kind of niche pop punk world so i feel like when we released it a lot of people didn't get it because they're just used to like dudes whining on like guitars yeah are you trying to redefine what pop punk is I think so, yeah. We're also, like, simultaneously trying to just, like, not really even focus on genre so much, but just mm-hmm. make a sound that is Meet Me at the Altar. Yeah. Because we're such a young band, and we only had, well, like, two EPs before this, two official EPs uh, <laughs> before this album. So we're still in the process of, like, figuring out who we are yeah. and, like, what we even want to say as a band, too. Um, and that's also something like I I'm I was personally dealing with like releasing this record and um, oh my god what's I gonna say? Fuck. Sometimes the train of thought just. <laughs> Anyways, pop punk bros hate cool like <laughs> a lot. Why aren't there more bands that look like you guys? Um, uh, good question. I don't know. There probably <laughs> are. But they're just not given the platform, the platform to be seen. Because yeah. that's how we felt for the first, like, three years of our band. We, like, just didn't have a platform. And we were trying to break our way in. But there's only so much you can do without other people's help. 
Mm -hmm. And the people who have the ability to help the most oftentimes play it safe and go with the same things that they've, you know, been supporting when they could be... Straight white dudes. Yeah, and they could be And the way it happened was so crazy because the George Floyd murder happened. And then I think everyone was like, oh my gosh, this is crazy. This is unacceptable. And then people started realizing that black people aren't supported really at all and we're not protected or anything. And then they're like, okay, we have to support black businesses and like support black art and black music, everything. And I, I, a lot of black creators went through this weird thing where it was like, we're benefiting from such a tragedy right. that was going on. So it was, it was such a bittersweet thing. Cause you're like, okay, this is great. Like I'm, I'm getting somewhere, but like, why did it have to be? Because of this. That? Yeah. And like, why weren't you looking before? Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Say that again. No, I was just saying, like, why why weren't they looking before? Mm. It's really sad, but I think, yeah. uh, um, you know, people don't like what doesn't look like them, and uh, people are afraid to take risks, and people are just looking to fill molds that they believe will work when the reality is, like, this day and age, there is no model. Like, right. There is no mold. Right. Like, there is no one of anything. Mm-hmm. And to not be aware enough to create music that is representative of everybody as opposed to just what they believe is the mainstream. Right. When the reality is the mainstream were the three of you and my gay ass, you know? Like, did that? this is what mainstream is. This right. is what America and the world looks like. And I, I don't know. Like, you, I can dissect that all day. Like, I worked for a lot of, like, white old people mm-hmm. at media companies who just wanted to project more of them. Mm-hmm. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. right. And that's one thing I love about headlining is because, like, we represent so many different types of people, and everyone's at our show. Like, right. everyone oh. from, like, white people to black people to Asian people, gay people. Kids, everyone's adults. Everyone's there. Mm-hmm. Young girls. Like, it's the best. And, like, I think every we made and are still creating a space where everyone in the world feels comfortable being at our shows and that it's been even straight white men (laughs) yes even yeah surprisingly yeah yeah. there have been some that have like shown up like really early to be part of like this free vip thing we do cool because we do like there's this one part of our set where we do like a an all-girl pit Uh like an all-girl mosh pit sick and even some of the straight white dudes are like just standing there like yeah because they're cool yeah Yeah. Yeah. dan you can go you're, you're, you're right. invited. I mean, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> they're only gonna, they're gonna have to scan you when you walk in. <laughs> just to ensure. Um, damn. You guys are very fucking cool. Is rock and roll dying? I don't think so. I think it's getting stronger. Well, it depends on what you think rock and roll is. Right. I For mean, sure. if it's honesty, I think. Yes. One hundred percent is exactly. dying. Uh, I, yeah. I think. Uh, I think the public's relationship w- with what it means to be honest goes in waves. Mm. You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, uh, sometimes the filter is really cool, and then the the move is no filter, and just being yourself, and then, uh, you know, then Facetune comes back. And, and I feel like nowadays, like, unauthenticity is being passed as honesty. Mm-hmm. It's being marketed mm. that way, so people think yeah. that one thing is like, oh, that's real, when it's like, not you know i just that's true i feel like, like emotion yeah. is just leaving music yeah these days i think that's why like we want to be so honest with this record and then like i can't tell you a song like don't let me get me by pink i don't think anyone is like that brutally honest in songs like it's very hard to find now i think that's like a because a mixture of fear and like being too much let alone too much because like I don't know. It's just crazy. It, it's really changed. We think about music when we were like, like 2009, like which is what this record was like based off of. Basically, it's completely different. It's really crazy. 2009, out of all years, yeah, that's that was my the favorite. Year that inspired this that's album. That's my favorite. Because we had the script, we had the fray, mm. we had Sarah Bareilles, we had Demi Lovato, Demi Lovato Pink, Kelly Clarkson. Katy Perry was coming. Did we already say Avril Lavigne? Hey, Gavin DeGraw. Gavin DeGraw. Yep. Gavin like, DeGraw. Yep. There were just so many Gavin. songwriters oh in the mainstream and not artists who... And so true. I hate to sound like a boomer, but, like, TikTok <laughs> is changing 
music. People are writing for the algorithm these days, and like they are. We can't really fault them because like that's how you stay relevant these days. But it's like at yeah, what? But relevancy cost? is different than building a fan base and selling out shows. It's that's so, so exactly. true. And so like, true. how do you define relevant? Like, relevant is okay. I, I ten seconds of my audio is used on these videos, <laughs> right? <laughs> right? And then the whole <laughs> the rest of the song they don't know any of the words. Yeah, that's not that, yeah. like okay. Great, you're relevant on one app. That has that, that can't translate. It doesn't elsewhere. translate anywhere else. Exactly. Dude. I'd be looking at TikTok as like a million followers. I go to the Instagram was like <laughs> four hundred. But, oh. but by the way, like the, the, the artists from TikTok that do translate are those that like play like more of a relationship game with the audience, and they have a parasocial relationship course, yeah. that exists. It's more than just their song being used. Right. I could talk about that for hours. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we really can. get us on another episode. And we'll <laughs> yeah. do a part two. Past, present, future. That is the the, the album. Totally deserves your ear. And we are here at Taco Bell, which is, yeah. I mean, this is m easily my favorite place on planet Earth. <laughs> and uh, you're talking about some, you're talking about people uh, giving you one thing, and it's really something else. And we were really lucky to try today, which I've been waiting many, many years to try a completely and totally vegetarian and vegan crunch wrap. Like, that's a game changer. Insane. Yeah. It was so Looks like really cheese. Good. Looks the like cheese sour cream. Good. The cheese, I feel like, was the well. No, that meat was the highlight. Looks like beef. Really good. But none of it is it. There's no yeah. beef. There's no cheese. There's no milk. I mean, there is, but there's not. Exactly. Really? But it tastes like there is. Right. Yeah. So I almost good. feel like it had more flavor. Yes. Right. How long have you been vegetarian? Uh, I don't know, Dan. How long has it been? <laughs> Uh, Dan has like this whole theory where I'm not really a vegetarian what? because I tr because I had a bite of meat once like a couple years ago f for a bit because I hadn't uh, had it in a long time. I think mm. it's been ten years, but he's been longer. How long have you been a vegetarian? Yeah, Ooh. thirteen years has been meatless. Good for you. Congratulations. Yes, oh my god, thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> How long have y'all been vegan? You're vegan. Yeah. Um. The way I gauge it, it's so funny. I was going to say, like, it's two weeks? Like, what are you about to no, say? No, it's by, I remember we went on tour with Khalid and Cambria and the U's. And after that, I went vegan. So, like, August 2021. Oh, it's been a couple years. Yeah. Sick. Yeah. I wasn't really big on, like, first of all, eggs are disgusting. Milk is gross. Mm. <laughs> and then. <laughs> the app. Like, I, <laughs> <laughs> I never, like. I only ate like chickens because I don't care about chickens. <laughs> what, the, what the fuck have chickens done to you? <laughs> They're just Dang. like, what is that? Ugh. What and is I hate that? Fish. I hate ocean. I hate <laughs> seafood. So I wasn't really. It wasn't that hard for me to go vegan. Yeah. Like she was saying. basically you didn't vegan. Like it <laughs> and I had if I, if I ate chicken, it had to be boneless because I don't want to eat off a of bone. You know how just that's gross. Yeah. How how could you do that? It's gross. So yeah, I was basically vegan already. Do you remember the first time you went to Taco Bell? No. You would have been like three. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. That was a long time ago. It's weird. I do. Really? Yeah, you want to hear the story? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. There's a story? <laughs> Fuck yeah, there's a story. It happened later in life because, you know, I grew up lower middle class and Taco Bell in my neighborhood was just seen as like a, like a thing that was out of reach. Like the cool kids, the wealthier kids, they all had Taco Bell, right? Mm -hmm. And they'd have it for lunch and I always wanted it. And my mom just never did it. Like it was Wendy's. Burger King, maybe, or McDonald's. Mm -hmm. That's it. Done. Taco Bell was just not in our rotation. And my mom wouldn't take me. So I was like eight, nine years old. And I saved up change only, like only coins. And I walked like three and a half miles from my house to Taco Bell with the change. And I bought my first taco and cheesy Fiesta potatoes. Aww. And, uh, Damn. And I got it myself. It was like the first thing I bought on my own. Aww. Like I got on my own and uh, changed everything. That's revolutionary. So <laughs> yeah. wow. I love Taco Bell. It's etched into the fiber of my being. And now here like you are. Three miles. Here again. <laughs> yeah, I walked three miles. <laughs> and three miles back. That's okay, Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> <laughs> that is a long did, way. Did you wear tennis shoes? Ooh, I don't. I was gonna say my shoes lit up back then, but probably not. You had like the Skechers. Nah. Dude, I used to love that. I was probably uh, wearing Skechers or something like that. Yeah. God. It was so crazy when, like, our manager texted us. She was like, Talk about wants to use a song in a commercial. We were like, What? That's yeah, crazy. Okay. It is wild. Yeah. And then, like, they sent us the first draft <laughs> of the commercial. I was like, 
why does that fit so fucking well? <laughs> it's so good. It's perfect. What is it like when you see it on TV or hear it? It was really weird. I was getting texts like five times a day from so many different people being yeah. like, wow, your commercial just came on like every single time. Like my aunts would text me every single time they saw it, which was they played the shit out of it. Which yeah, shout they out did. Shout out, shout out. Shout out. Yeah, I was you, working yeah. in a restaurant at the time, like when the commercial was airing, and I was like standing up at the host stand. And I turn around and I look on the TV, and it was on, but they had like the sound muted, so I couldn't even be like, guys, like <laughs> we're in that. But how would they know? I <laughs> remember like all the scenes. Of, I know what it looks like. Right? Yeah, the scenes. Wait, when did you guys leave normal people jobs? That's like longer. a month ago, I two months ago. I've never had a job, so I don't know. And I've only done family businesses. So really but like, I didn't like have it that whole time. Like, yeah. when we're not on tour, I get really bored at home. Mm. I just I can't just sit and like have nothing to do because like I'm not school. I just can't. I gotta yeah, do oh something. We're all dropouts. So you we are. <laughs> you were a hostess at a restaurant. Mm-hmm. Damn. But I hope. I hope I never have to go back. <laughs> yeah, fingers and we're toes. Manifesting, we're manifesting thing. We're Rub manifesting that wood, here. sisters. Yeah. yeah Do it right. for me. Just put all your Wait, mental. That is, by the way, that is rude. I just called you sisters. How do you all identify? Oh, sisters. no, you're right. No, we're all sisters. Okay. Yeah. I didn't want to assume. Yeah. Can I also ask, how do we feel about the term queer? I mean, I don't think I can speak on that. I am. So. How do you feel well, about it? I mean, I always thought that it was a good thing that we take stuff back. Because mm. queer... From I'm familiar with in the history of queer that it was originally used as a negative term, but now, mm-hmm. at least how I always kind of use it in my friend group, if someone someone could be not gay but queer, yeah, well you could be pan, you could be asexual, exactly. right. you could be bi, you could be gay, exactly, you could be a lesbian. and that's I and I kind of that. view that all under the umbrella. Right. Non-binary queer. would also be considered queer, yeah. Exactly. Like if you like don't just feel like identifying with a specific thing, you could just be like, oh yeah, I'm yeah. Queer, queer, and it's a and umbrella. It just, it just works that way. I always feel like I well, it's really not the same, but I always equate things like this to like the N word. I don't feel like I I should be able to say that word personally. Queer. Yeah. I feel like I think the f word would be different. True. Oh yeah, that's scary. <laughs> I hate that word so much, and sometimes they say it. I'm like, uh, and then I forget. I'm like, <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> but even then, like it does, like uh, you know, my friend yelled at me once for using it, and we're both f words. So. It's like f-words. context. You can't like say it hatefully, but if you're like joking with another uh, queer, oh, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, like yeah. Yeah, yeah. See, never yeah. to be used in a mean way. F word, yes. I think there's something to taking back queer because I also believe in this concept of like why the act of coming out or having to specify to somebody that you're just meeting or just getting to know in passing and they're asking about your sexuality. Like there's so many nuances to being LGBTQIA plus mm-hmm. that like eh, to go into the nuances and to define it in full is really incredibly emotionally taxing and really hard. So to use a catch-all term allows for an easier social uh, situation, I think. Yeah, definitely. So there is something to like maybe bringing back queer. You can say it here. You won't be judged. It's a safe space. You, you know, say they it? also say that sure. I hate. We'll my hold your hand. My mom always, um, t- she always told me, well, the D word is a nasty word, and I hate that word. Okay. And I... <laughs> I don't really like that word either. So. Oh damn! I, f- I forgot that that Ew, one existed. It's so <laughs> gross. Yeah, that's gross. I feel very strongly about that one. I hate but it. But I would put that with the F word. Yeah. I would. Yeah. I wouldn't put queer with those two words. Maybe I'm crazy. I think in history, at one point, it was there. Yeah, I don't I think I wouldn't put queer with those two no. words either. Okay. Because I, f- I, <laughs> I, mean, <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Because no, I don't think so. Even though I, I'm sure originally people used queer as like a really derogatory term. Totally. But today, I do think it's way more normalized. Yeah, it is. I feel like it's very like it's like a person by person basis too. Like everyone's true. feelings about it very are valid. True. Mm. It also everything. depends. I've noticed. Yeah. It also <laughs> depends on <laughs> older gays and younger gays. Because mm-hmm. well, Gen Z loves the term, and younger millennials use the term. It's older people mm-hmm. who have a problem with it. But to be mm-hmm. fair, like. Again, uh, you know, some of those old gays like w- don't want lesbians to go to their gay bars. Like, right. you know what I mean? Like, these really people weird. are backwards too. Old yeah, people are backwards no matter how they. Yeah, identify. old people are old people. I always, <laughs> exactly. I always, I don't so wanna, true. I don't yeah. want to grow old. I'm really 
really scared. Does that scare you? Dude. I think I, this is very morbid, but I think max 50. Why are you saying that on this couch? Don't fucking say that. I'm just saying. (laughs) Why are you manifesting the age at which you're going to die? I don't want to grow up because old people are just so, oh my God. Yeah, but you don't need to be that type of old person. That's so true. But what if if it's like The answer is not not being here. The answer is just being better than your But then again, I also don't think we're going to last that long. As a society. (laughs) We're going to blow up before I'm 50, so it's fine. Well, you know what's still going to be here after the world blows up? Taco Bell's still going to be here. Oh my God, That first Taco Bell. (laughs) Dude, the first Taco Bell is still going to be here. <laughs> You're still going to be able to get your Crunchwrap <laughs> your cheese and cream. And the fire dinosaurs are going to order from there. <laughs> you really think the world's going to end? I do. If we I don't fix our shit. I don't shit. think that's like even right. that. It's not that scary. I, okay. I feel like, I don't know. I feel like everything kind of repeats. I feel like we've probably all have been here before. We just don't. No, remember it in this moment right now no like in, in the world like you might uh, have been like a dog or yeah, like I, something. I, I, I believe in that so like kind of. but it's also there's something like super like not warm but you, you don't feel as scared because like it's like all of us are gonna be gone. Yeah, we're all we're all in it together yeah. I, honestly yeah. i might prefer that uh, yeah, Cause like yeah, my yeah. biggest fear is like of getting course. separated from the ones i love like i yeah. don't want yeah that's like, gonna suck that's that sounds so scary. how are you gonna find each other i'm like maybe that's part of your belief is like, oh, yeah, you'll always find each other. But, like, time doesn't... I just don't right. understand how that works. I don't understand <laughs> either. <laughs> like, how can it be a ghost, but, like, time doesn't exist? So, like, shouldn't they already be there? Because it's just like, oh, we're all dead now. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe there's a waiting list once you get up there. <laughs> <laughs> call you center. Be, you gotta wait. You gotta to call, you have to call the operator. And oh, yeah, God's out right now. He's got the keys. Name. We can't. God's a woman. Can. <laughs> so, uh, I God is a woman. That. I mean, I think we cannot have the conversation with God right now. <laughs> I, I can literally talk about this like, for, for hours. God, universe, yeah, we can do. we've had some heavy source, whatever you want to call it. Um, but if you believe that we end up being reincarnated into something else, do you believe our spirit lives on around us? Like, can our loved ones be here right now? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Even if I'm in a dog, I feel like it. Okay. <laughs> I feel like anything is possible. Oh, that is true. Yeah, I I, feel like I, it's I, I often think about how much we don't know. I often and think it's like about crazy. Like, have you seen that movie Everything Everywhere All at Once? No, nah, it's too much for me. Dude, I was so confused. I don't think I'm bright enough to watch that. I was so confused. <laughs> <laughs> like, what is happening? Wait, did you watch it like all the way through? Yeah, I got confused when they were like in the supply closet and he was like talking about someone they needed to like I, see. That's what it was. Check out the movie. Starting to make sense. It won an Oscar. <laughs> also, listen to all of their music. Their entire discography is going to be on whatever DSP you stream from, Amazon Music included, Past, Present, Future. That is the name of the album, but apparently it's all happening all at once, right? <laughs> yes, it is. Everything, yep. everywhere, all at once? Yes. Yep. Yes, it is. Uh, mm. uh, <laughs> tour, are you going? What do you mean? We're on it. You're on, on it right, right now. now. Damn, yeah, we're on it right, right now. now. Are you headlining or are you opening for someone? Yep, headlining. First headliner. Giddy up. Oh, my God, you're playing the Echo. Yeah. 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 Is it tomorrow? Yeah, tomorrow. Or the no, 23rd, two days. Two days? Tomorrow oh, two days. Tomorrow's like Santa Ana. Yeah, Santa Ana. Yeah. I oh, swear, I do <laughs> know. <laughs> it's somewhere <laughs> stored in my head. Uh, I may show up at your show. Yay. You should. You should. It's should. very Why not? fun. Yeah. It's a great I'll, time. I want to mosh. Oh, oh absolutely. It's a a lot of people please. have been moshing for the first time. Yeah, at yeah. Our shows. A lot. yeah, I've never moshed. What about me gave it off that I've never moshed before? <laughs> <laughs> you felt the need to bring that up. Um, I don't know. You know, the aura was there. And also, just the, the fact that the first thing you said is, I want to mosh. Is it my yeah, Birkenstocks? Um, that's the first thing you said. I want to mosh. I think it's. Uh, the Birkenstocks are a look. I think you're yeah. slay. Okay. I think, I think they're slay. slay. Yeah. But maybe wear They'll fall tennis off in the shoes pit. Yeah. in the pit. Yeah, I need to have be on the balls of my feet ready to move. <laughs> yeah, you're going to lose your shoes. You're going to be slipping and sliding on, like, some guy's beer that they spilled or something. Dude, you Warp, Warp Tour uh, moshes? I've never been in one, but I've watched them. Have you, oh, <laughs> no. Warp Tour moshes are so cute. Right. Why do you say it like that? Scary. Bamboozle <laughs> moshes after 10 o'clock? Oh, my God, frightening. <laughs> Warp Tour. You know, we we all always say we wish we played it because we got blew up, like, right Right after. After it ended. Literally right after. But then again, I think that we'd be complaining the whole time. Oh, for sure. Yeah, we've heard a lot of It's hot and the routing's insanely dangerous. And it's all on freaking uh, concrete, so it captures the insanity in the face. And there's so many bands on there, like, there's no way they have a decent green room. No, no, they don't. They have trailers in the back. It's horrendous. That warp Tour hot is a different type of hot. Yeah, it is. I don't know why. I don't think I've felt hot like that since, like, (laughs) that is so (laughs) true. Crazy. (laughs) Global warming doesn't exist. My mom used to go... She used to literally, like, for example, one summer, 
me and my one of my best friends, we we're like, oh my god, let's go to Warp Tours. My mom used to drive us Florida, North Carolina. Wow. And then she'd get us hotels. Oh, she's a and real she'd one. She'd stay at Warp Tour in the parent tent. Shout and out the Angela. Hot. That's not even like I'm like, girl, she's so amazing. Yeah, but that is that in addition to a bunch of other reasons, is one of the reasons why you all are here today. Yeah. And yeah. y'all are a unit. Your mom is incredible. I love her. She's a real one. Shout out Angela. Angela. Yeah. <laughs> and uh shout out to the three of you. Thank you really for being here. Aww. Thank you for having us. Thank, Thank you so much. Literally anytime. All your albums moving forward. Come on, come on, come on by. We will. Absolutely. We'll be That's back. The plan. Probably at Taco Bell in your studio. Sit. Yes. Sit. Real quick, how do you define success? Do you have a definition yet, or is it really still the beginning? That's a really big question. You can answer it the next time. I, because I don't know. I feel like we'll measure our success by the amount of lives that we change from our music. Mm-hmm. That's true. Because that's, uh, that's, like, the most rewarding thing, especially being on tour headlining for the first time, is, like, getting to meet the people who are supporting us and just hearing, like, how our music has helped them is so many stories you can't yeah. put a price on that mm-hmm. do you feel like there's a responsibility involved with you guys being up there and people seeing people who look like them who live like them yeah i mean th- there is there's strength in that i feel like because we knew that there wasn't that many other groups that look like us and especially in the genre that we were in we knew that that would be a thing that we're stepping into this role we're mm-hmm. going to be that representation for people because like we didn't have that ourselves but i think because we knew that so early we were ready you know we we knew that this was coming and we've been working for a long time yeah. and I, I i think we all feel really comfortable being mm-hmm. in this position and treating people how we would have wanted of to course, be treated yeah. yeah we have the most heartwarming like interaction with this i'm pretty sure he was a single dad and his daughter which we filmed by the way which i'm so happy that we filmed and he was like he was DMing me like a couple weeks before the show he was like i have a daughter and like she loves you guys so much and we love you all this stuff and then he messaged me before the salt lake city show salt lake city and he was like yeah we're here like we're so excited and then i was like guys we have to do something really special for her like we have to so you got a, like a goodie bag of like a VIP goodie bag and like a Taco Bell gift card was in there. Taco Bell gift cards, <laughs> yeah, a bunch of Taco, Taco Bell, Bell socks stuff. and like stickers, yeah. and then got a Converse. And the dad told us he was like, "It's really hard raising a girl in Utah," and I just wanted to show my daughter that girls can do cool stuff. And just that <sighs> was like, ugh, it was so incredible. And she was so, it was so hard not to cry in that moment. Yeah, yeah. it was so sincere. So amazing. No, because that one moment can change your life. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it really could. It proves that anything is possible. Mm-hmm. You guys are very, coo- very, very cool with a K. I appreciate <laughs> it very much. <laughs> Past, present, future is the album. Listen to it. Link in the description below. Also, if you want to check them out on their headlining tour, we'll put a link in there too. Uh, you can keep that taco pillow. <laughs> that was a promise <laughs> I made sure. to you, and it's not even mine. I just, I uh, <laughs> on behalf of it's Taco Bell, now. I say, you can have it. <laughs> it's, it's yours you. now. Taco I hope pillow. that's okay, Erica. Taco yes. pillow. Rocket has a taco in it. Taco Her name's Taco. Oh, how o- <laughs> original. Who would have thought? And yes, it's a she. <laughs> of, of course, course, of course she is. He yeah, has a taco pillow. Absolutely. Uh, oh, yeah, that's funny. Yeah, meet me at the altar, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> There's also something, because we could just make so many surprises. Oh, that's fine. What's wrong? So, um, y'all are the first um, people to receive our purple card. Oh, wow, I'm going to vomit. So this is a huge deal. you are going to have unlimited Taco Bell. Uh, and use it whenever you would like. Oh, are you nice. filming this? Are, are you so filming nice. this? Do you want to give a little bit more? No, this is like, when I was interviewing with Sean, he was like, what do you want to do? I'm like, do some passionate people here. We need a purple card. So this is engraved with your guys' names on it. Yeah. Yo, fuck that away, dude. And it's on that Talk about for a year. Yeah. Oh. So it actually runs out every month, and then you just like let us know when you need it. All right, so it's a thousand. Yeah, and you just keep telling us when you need it to rebuild, but it's for the three of you to share. Mm-hmm. You have one That's as well. This is yeah. Thing. So just yeah. yeah. So if you're so old mom, mom, when your wow. thousand runs out, your mom oh just God. hit me up. And Congratulations! Look at the back. Oh, I've only been here for half a month. Yeah. Oh my gosh! Thank you. 
Yeah. I mean, yeah. So you should sure. be able to. Yeah. So I've been using the app. It's just a really cute gift card. The app now that has native delivery has been amazing. I use it yeah, all the time. Great. I would cry. Yeah. Holy shit. Dude, I can't believe this is real. It's real. Uh, it, it was incredible because, yeah, we, we knew you guys were coming, and so uh, we have to get this done. Oh, here, so. thank you. You're welcome. Thank you so much. Of course. This is like top three days of my life. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. For 21 sure. Pilots was the first. Agreed. And our Agreed. album Agreed. release was the second. Okay. So. Love that. Wow. Actually, I think we have the same words. <laughs> <laughs> the same words. Yeah. Dude, this oh is the God. craziest thing.